Ambassador. Thank you very much, Director General. Excellencies, Honorable Grasa Machel, dear ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to be here today and I thank the IOM very much for, for this invitation. I would also like to start with a quote as Sir Peter Sutherland closed his remarks. Um, migration is an expression of the human aspiration for dignity, safety and a better future. These words by the UN Secretary Ban Ki-moon, um, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, in his remarks to the high-level dialogue on international migration and development in October last year, highlight the importance of migration for sustainable development. Sustainable development can only be achieved if we take into account the aspirations of migrants, respect their human rights, and recognize the potential of migration for economic and social development. We've heard it many times before today, but also in the last days. To achieve sustainable development and to ensure life in dignity for all, it is inevitable that migration figures prominently in the post-2015 development agenda. In my intervention today, I will focus hence on the role migration plays in the post-2015 agenda in the first place, as well as in the parallel discussion on financing for development. But to start with, I would like to share some general observations and thoughts on the post-2015 agenda with you. Firstly, please allow me to take a step back and throw a glance at the Millennium Development Goals, the MDGs. There is no doubt that the MDGs have demonstrated the value of translating a shared vision on development into concrete, time-bound goals. They put the focus on key challenges and have successfully mobilized global action as well as respective resources. Yet, as the Director General already mentioned, neither migration as a phenomena nor migrants as key actors of development in almost all countries around the world have had their deserved place in the MDG framework. Consequently, the current global partnership to implement MDGs lacks an important driver of development. We heard the most important driver of development, as Peter Sutherland stated. This has to change now with the post-2015 development agenda. For some years, the international community increasingly acknowledges the utmost importance of migration for development. Hence, time has come to do justice to migration, also in the context of a new global framework for sustainable development. The process to define the successor framework of the MDGs in the post-2015 agenda is already well advanced. As you know, the Open Working Group on SDGs in which I represented Switzerland, produced an ambitious proposal for SDGs and targets. The adoption of this report last July was preceded by 13 sessions over 18 months of intensive discussions in which my country took an active role, sharing a seat with France and Germany. Looking back, I would say it was well worth the effort. In my opinion, the report definitely is an important landmark in the process of defining a new global agenda for sustainable development. We actually consider the report of the Open Working Group the best possible outcome of these complex deliberations and quite difficult negotiations, as it balances the interests of most UN member states, I would say. From a Swiss perspective, we are particularly pleased that important issues that have not been sufficiently covered by the MDGs are now anchored in this agenda. Among them, water, gender equality, sexual and reproductive health and rights, sustainable consumption and production, disaster risk reduction, peaceful and safe societies, and, obviously, migration. 
at the same time, we must admit that the proposal by the Open Working Group is not perfect. Of course, there are contents that could be improved. 17 goals and 169 targets are perhaps too many in number. And not all targets are smart, meaning measurable, achievable, relevant and time-bound. However, when assessing the report of the Open Working Group, we have to do justice to the way this document was elaborated. While the MDGs were produced by the UN, ba uh, by the UN based on the Millennium Declaration and therefore never formally negotiated, the proposal of the Open Working Group is the result of a truly inclusive process, integrating not only the different views of member states, but also the voices of other stakeholders, including civil society, international organizations such as IOM, academia, local governments, and the private sector. So looking ahead, there are many open questions regarding the process. It is still not clear whether the discussion on goals and targets will be resumed, or if the remaining process rather takes focus on other important elements of the post-2015 agenda, such as implementation monitoring and dreaming, or others. Like everyone else who closely follows this process, we look forward to the synthesis report now, Secretary General, to be published next week, as well as the outcome of the modality discussions regarding the negotiations next year. In any case, Switzerland will continue its active engagement in this process. We will further engage to make sure that the ambition substance of the proposed SDGs, which is there, will not be watered down and that migration keeps a prominent place or has a prominent place in this goal framework. Ladies and gentlemen, turning our attention now more specifically to the question of migration and its role in the context of the post-2015 agenda, it is worthwhile to consider first a certain paradox, which, is, which I have already shortly touched at the beginning. Migration has always been a strategy for individuals and their families to overcome poverty, to escape conflict, to react to economic and environmental environmental shocks and to strive for a more prosperous future. It has thus always been a driver for global sustainable development, and yet it is only recently that the topic has gained international attention. Peter Sutherland already indicated the development of policy initiatives during the last years. From the Bern Initiative and the support to the Global Commission on International Migration to the Continuous commitments to the Global Forum on Migration and Development, as well as the engagement in projects such as the Global Knowledge Partnership on Migration and Development, NOMAD. Switzerland has been at the forefront of substantiating the international dialogue on migration and development for many years. The decision taken by my government already in June 2013 to actively promote the inclusion of migration in the post 2015 agenda is one of the key ambitions in our position is therefore a lo logical continuation of this policy. I would like to mention three key arguments why the important contributions by millions of migrants all over the world to development have to be recognized in the post-2015 development agenda. First and foremost, migration is about people, their human rights rights and fundamental freedoms. Migration is a human experience and the cumulative outcome of individual choices and opportunities, or lack thereof. It is about the understandable will of people to overcome adversity and live a life in security and prosperity. Second, migration matters for human development and poverty reduction. Evidence from around the world highlights the fact that remittances, for instance, contribute to the reduction of poverty and stimulate 
human development. development. With most migrants moving from a less to a more developed country, they tend to realize large average gains for them and their families, their communities in terms of income, as well as in terms of health and education. Third, Migration matters for economic growth and job creation, specifically. It, it is also about transfer of knowledge and technology, about filling critical gaps in labor markets and responding to demographic changes in our society. Migrants promote innovation, create businesses, help to develop new markets, provide and consume goods and services, expand tax bases, and support support social security schemes in countries with aging populations, so on and so on. So together with a growing coalition of governments, international and civil society organizations, as well as academia, we have managed to achieve this remarkable mi milestone of having migration and the mentioned aspect of migration included in the proposal of the Open Working Group on SDGs. I think it is a remarkable milestone. At this point, I would like to particularly emphasize and acknowledge the steadfast support by the IOM and persistent leadership by the Special Representative of the Secretary General, Sir Peter Sutherland. I don't know if he still hears us. It was an uphill battle, indeed, to get the acknowledgement that migration is indeed a factor of global sustainable development, worth including in this agenda. But thanks to you and many other partners, several of whom present here today as well, we've managed to come one important step closer to this shared ambition. The final challenge remains to have the substance of the Open Working Group report, including all important aspects of migration adopted by the heads of states at the summit in September 2015. We will therefore continue to participate in and support advocacy events on migration and development. We will also continue to collect evidence from the field to better showcase how migrants contr contribute to all three dimensions of sustainable development, social, economic, and environmental. We look forward to a continuous close cooperation with all our esteemed partners. So, ladies and gentlemen, to conclude, please let me quickly address the upcoming third international conference on finance Financing, and, uh, financing for development, which will be held in Addis Ababa in July next year. The report by the Intergovernmental Committee of Experts on Sustainable Development Financing has acknowledged that remittances have a growing impact on sustainable development around the globe. The deliberations leading us towards the Addis Ababa conference give us the unique opportunity to propose policy changes and innovative measures to facilitate the productive use of remittances as private transactions for sustainable development. As governments, we do have the means to promote framework conditions to better support migrants who voluntarily decide to send back money to their families or invest in their home countries. We do subscribe to the need to reduce the transfer cost of remittances and actively advocate a respective target in the open working group proposal. But we also see the need to promote innovative thinking. The market could offer micro savings or investments or insurance products tailored for remittances. The migrants and their families could thereby improve the management of their finances and take advantage of more convenient solutions. We should, for example, consider linking remittances more systematically to certain services. For example, in Senegal, migrants working abroad can pay directly the tuition fees of family members back home. The same could be offered, for instance, for health services, utility bills, mortgages, or any other service available on the market. But the aim is not to instrumentalize migrants for the funding of an ambitious global sustainable development agenda.
son nom de développement mais de reconnaître que leurs ressources sont déjà déjà soutenir le projet de développement et que l'on peut améliorer ce processus et plus efficace et plus efficace. Merci beaucoup.